Hello everybody, welcome on a Well-Fed Brain channel. I'm Natalia, a neuroscientist and nutritionist who is passionate about helping people with eating disorders, especially binge eating. In today's episode, I would like to share with you why I'm suspicious of food freedom movement and also why I believe that binge eating is not only caused by restriction and to explain you why do I think that I will have to share with you some bits of my own personal uh, story so stay tuned to listen uh, about that uh, just keep please keep in mind that I'm gonna share with you sort of like a recap of my story so I'm not gonna share with you many details and as we all know sometimes the devil is in the details so uh, let me let me get started and let me tell you in a nutshell uh, my story with binge eating disorder so it started well i don't know if it started when i was a kid i was just a kid with big appetite but i also had quite i was quite active so that's okay because then it balanced its, each other and um, then i think that my first experiences with dieting were when i was at the, the first year in the university and then i just noticed that uh, i was living with a friend with a slim uh, girl in the same room and i just noticed that she ate way less than I did. She didn't have such a big appetite and she also had a nice physique. So I decided to uh, to try to, I wouldn't say that I went on a diet, but I just tried to eat less and it actually worked. Uh, when I came back home from my first year at the university, I my parents were surprised because I actually looked slimmer. However, when I came back to home, uh, I had my first uh, binging episodes because I was just bored in a house. I was probably also hungry because before I just lost some uh, some weight and most important I was depressed because when I was studying I was very active and I was socializing with people however when I came back to my parents house for uh, holidays for like two or three months it was just I just didn't have anything to do with myself, I didn't meet with any friends, so I was bored, depressed and this is when the binge eating started and also purging, however I wasn't really good in purging, uh, yeah until today I don't know, the, the vomiting is like, it's not something I, I would do, so, um, so thankfully I didn't get into a trap of bulimia, I just stick, uh, stick to uh, for a time, uh, um, I I mostly just binged, and I came back uh, to my second year at the university, and I was just you know puffy from all of the food. I gained a lot of weight, uh, and then I I also experimented because I had this this binging problem, but I also had an acne, and then I read some articles that maybe ditching the dairy could help, and I was always. Uh, uh, I'm an animal lover, so I actually decided to go vegan. And I must tell you that at the beginning, uh, on a vegan diet, I was still sort of binging, but I was binging on a healthy foods. And I could say that sort of going plant-based really, really helped me to heal my relationship with food because I could eat a lot of food, but still it wasn't very caloric uh, dense. So that was that was good for me because mentally I could it really it eat a lot but it was still not enough probably for uh, my body also back then in poland because i'm from poland there wasn't many junk foods so actually i was forced to eat healthy because I mean, there was a junk food, but it wasn't vegan. Uh, most chocolates, cookies had something, uh, uh, had some ingredients that had animal products, so I just didn't eat them. So actually, this um, this paradise, uh, yeah, I, I uh, that was really good time in my life because I was eating healthy, I was loving it, and I actually uh, lost even more weight. So at at that time, at some point, I think I weigh like. 50, 52, 53 kilos. So for my height, it's a very, very low uh, weight. And this is the moment when I, for example, lost my period. I also, I know that my bones weren't that um, that strong. So there were some some health problems, and of course my teeth also. Um, also, I had some troubles with with my teeth. 
Um, so, so I decided that uh, yeah, probably I, I should gain some uh, some weight, and it was a good period because back then I also decided to study abroad to want to go for one year to study abroad, and I chose uh, Netherlands. And when I moved to to Netherlands for one year, I also decided that this is going to be my weight gain journey, and I'm gonna get my period back, and everything's gonna be alright because I knew that. Um, I won't be able to eat as healthy because I didn't have any money. Well, I did have money, but I have had limited amount of money. And um, there's a huge price difference between Poland and Netherlands. So in Poland, I could buy cheaply, very healthy uh, raw food. And I was eating a lot of raw food. Uh, however, in the Netherlands, I knew that I won't be able to afford that. That's why I decided to incorporate into my diet more... Uh, more mm, more cooked food and also more calorie dense foods like peanut butters, chocolate spreads. I just thought that for a year I'm gonna live on a less healthy diet but on a cheaper diet so that you know I can buy for two euros uh, a pot of peanut butter and for example this peanut butter uh, you know will provide me with so many thousands of calories that that's just gonna be okay. However it didn't work as well because um, because I think uh, I do have like addictive personality, uh, definitely in my family there are people who were addicted to, uh, to alcohol and I know that there might be something in my genes that it makes me a person who is prone to, uh, to addictive uh, behavior and also I definitely have like higher uh, reward sensitivity. So when I started eat, uh, to eat those foods and I want to emphasize that I I allowed myself to eat them. So this is the moment when I want to talk about the food freedom because my point was to gain weight. My point was to eat more junk food. So this, at this moment, I wasn't restricting. I was happy when I had like a food ba baby. I thought like, yes, I'm feeding my, my body what it needs. And uh, yes, soon I will get my period and everything's gonna be fine. And um, I was doing that for, for a few months. But of course, when you, when you are, <laughs> you, you don't really see the, the changes in your body. I didn't have a, um, um, I didn't have a weight. I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have a, a mirror, so I actually didn't see how my body changed and my body changed a lot and at some point, yes, I did get my period, which is great uh, and, I, uh, and I'm glad that I went through that journey because I, I got my period and I think that I got healthier and at this point I thought that, um, that yeah, right now I will just wait for like a two, three cycles so everything can, can, you know, can level up and then I can, I don't know, stop eating so much junk food. Unfortunately, it wasn't that simple. I just couldn't couldn't stop eating it. At this point, I was just binging, but at the beginning, I was binging and I was justifying it. Like, yes, I am doing that for my body. My body needs more fat on, um, I need more fat on my body, so that's good. But then everything spiraled and my acne was so big because all of this insulin influx that was horrible and I've, I, yeah, again, I had a lot of inflammation in my body. Um, some of you may not feel it, but I know when I'm eating too much junk that I am inflamed. So this is what happened. And I came back home um, and I, I looked there, I, I didn't look great. And oh, there's one important thing that I should mention that when I was gaining this weight and when I slowly started to binging again, actually, I was also working on myself. Um, I, I was on my like spiritual journey, I would say. I started loving myself. I started to reading about importance of like accepting yourself, loving yourself. I did many like discoveries. I tried uh, I tried psychedelics. I actually also attended meditation group. So this is also when I, dis this is the moment when I also have to say that I sometimes disagree with people who tell you that in order to fix your binge eating, you have to also, you know, fix your, um, fix your, uh, so psychological problems that you have to go into your, the root cause because at this point, you know, I was I was trying to discover myself, but at the same time, I was you know binging. Like uh, I was starting to loving myself and uh, and accepting who I am, but at the same time, I was binging even more. So it's not how it's supposed to be, right? Because other people will tell you when you start loving yourself and um, and accepting yourself and discovering yourself, then the binges will go down. In my in my case, it was something different. 
Um, also, I would like to mention that what I did was something similar like with my weight gain journey. It was something similar that what uh, Stephanie Butlermore is doing, but she's doing for it from uh, slightly different reasons. But you can see how uh, going all in uh, works totally different for people who have experience with eating disorder and with people who uh, do not have experience with eating disorder. So I had experience with eating disorder and then when I went all in and allowed myself to eat all the foods, that brought back binge eating disorder. But in the case of Stephanie Buttermore, who, um, who went all in but she didn't previously binge, it fixed her. It fixed her problem with a huge appetite. So yes, she gained weight, but at the same time, her appetite was lower, lower, and right now she is slowly losing weight. So in her case, going all in healed her. In my case, going all in, which I didn't know that, that something like going all in exists, um, it brought more troubles. And when I came back home, I was, I had, yeah, of course, I gained weight. Everybody ha have noticed that. I gained weight, I gained acne, I lost my self-confidence, I lost my identity because I was a girl, I was a skinny vegan girl, and also I was a girl who loved healthy foods. And at this point, I was only eating packaged foods. And I also was eating these packaged foods because when I was living in dormitory, when I was abroad, um, uh, I, I shared the kitchen with like 15 other people and I have anxiety around food, around people, you know, asking me what do I, what do you eat when you're vegan or something? And um, I'm, I'm sort of like, yeah, I have anxiety around, I don't know, cooking around people. So in this period of time, I also ate a lot of packaged foods, and it is not healthy for you. So again, I came back, um, I came back home. And um, yeah, I, I was I was deeply depressed, and I think that uh, eating this all of this junk food was uh, was also a very important part of the story because because we know that junk food can impact your your microbiome, can also um, can also cause inflammation inside your body, and there is a, a inflammatory uh, theory of depression. So all of this inflammation that is happening in your gut or in your body can impact your mental health. And I think that this is uh, what happened to me. My body just didn't react as well to all of this uh, junk food. I came back home. I uh, And there, are, there were many like bad things happening to me. And this is also one of the reasons why I uh, why I probably didn't continue my career as a neuroscientist. So we can say that thanks to food freedom, I of course gained weight, gained acne, lost my self-esteem and gained also depression. And um, I, wasn't, I didn't continue my career as a neuroscientist because I was so depressed, because I was so inflamed, because I ate so much uh, processed foods and from there, my, my life just went uh, downwards. I back then I also thought that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be a diet coach, um, and I've made some few YouTube a few videos on my YouTube on a Polish YouTube channel. However, I was I was criticized. <laughs> I was criticized like, hey, we're not gonna take a nutrition advice from you. Clearly, you look you you gain some weight, and it's like. We're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna listen to you. So all of those hateful comments were, were just showed me something that I felt inside. I felt inside like a fraud that I cannot fix my own relationship with food. So how can I uh, help others? So this was just a dark time uh, in my life. And few times uh, during past few minutes, I, I I told you about weight gain, like it's something bad. I I understand that weight gain sometimes is necessary. And part of me thinks that weight gain was necessary for me to get my period back. But at the same time, I, I just want to emphasize that I am not fat phobic. I just know that in my case, too much weight gain caused all of this inflammation and impacted my mental health. Not only uh, like my what, what I thought about my weight gain, but also the fact that uh, uh, that uh, your lipid cells they do also release inflammatory uh, for example cytokines that also can impact your your health so um, yes so that was sort of my story in a nutshell of course the story how i actually recovered the, the second time from my 
uh, binge eating relapse is totally different story I should make a, another video about that but right now uh, I can tell you that yeah I discovered uh, mindful eating that was very helpful I also had to break some like associations in my brain I also moved a few times and that helped a lot uh, because really my brain I am a habit forming creature I really build habits very easily so for me like changing the places where I lived also helped me to build new and um, new habits yeah I just had to break some uh, association patterns in my brain intuitive eating helped a little bit uh, but then I started sort of like abusing it so again like uh, my recovery story is a story for a different video so now you know why I'm so passionate about what I'm doing. I just don't want you to go through the same and I don't know, lost an opportunity to do an amazing career as for example, neuroscientist, because I know that I lost my uh, opportunity. Uh, so right now I'm trying to cut through the bullshit. I, I've read many, um, many research papers about, you know, food addiction, overeating, binge eating. And I think, and I think that uh, what is lacking in the, in the space is just this, um, this different approach because everyone is just talking only about restriction and of course science papers do say that uh, if you are restricting uh, then you might be also binging that of course uh, binge eating is triggered by restriction but it's not the whole um, the whole story and I think that it's worth remembering that I know that the restriction can increase uh, cravings however there are also many other components because binge eating is an interplay of many factors that are psychological and also uh, biological and i think that some people just just do not look at this problem more holistically let me be clear i think that food freedom is awesome concept uh, i think that it works for few people because i see dietitians sharing their clients success stories and i know that uh, that they wouldn't lie. So I know that food freedom can work for so many people. However, at the same time, we have to remember we cannot push this philosophy on everybody. Like we cannot push, uh, you know, uh, intuitive eating on everybody. It doesn't work for everyone. And yeah, there's something inside me that feels like feels a little bit cringe. I, I cringe a little bit when I see a dietitian who is promoting, for example, eating cookies at, um, at breakfast if you just crave it or whatever. And, um, and, to, and to, for you to better understand what do I mean, I would like to read to you right now two uh, quotes, which I think that they represent uh, exactly what I, what I think. First quote, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit and I think that some dietitians you know this is what they are doing second quote this one is slightly longer I, I, I hope that I will read it correctly <laughs> in a market where buyers reject the tried and true in favor of false promises and pixie dust and in a culture where scapegoats and silver bullets are preferred over a prosaic blend of science and sense the sellers respond accordingly so I think that this is sort of like our, uh, our fault as well, because we all want to hear that, yeah, we can eat anything we want and we will still lose weight and we will fix our relationship with food and everything's gonna be great. Just let go of all of the restriction. It just sounds great. That's why some people will sell this philosophy to us and we will prefer it over, uh, over something else. And I think that, that this is sort of a problem. Of course, I do know about marketing a little bit more. And I know that most of the dietitians probably they are, they are aware of some shortcomings of their message. However, again, they have to market to one specific person, blah, blah. Food freedom just sounds appealing, right? Um, and I personally, I actually cannot criticize any food freedom dietitians or coaches because I actually don't know what's inside the program. However, I think I would be very deeply disappointed if I would, you know, sign up, go pay thousands of dollars for the program, sign up on a program, and, and during the, our first meeting, they would say just like, eat whatever you want, <laughs> what, eat whatever you crave for. I would be very pissed off if, if this is what would happen, because I know that my program is you know, I spent uh, a lot of time, you know, building it and thinking what kind of exercises would be the best, what kind of worksheets could I could I make? Like, I worked on it and I know that it's not, 
um, you know this neuroplasticity training that is not super easy but with this like food freedom it sounds very easy so I'm interested in what's actually inside the program um, so if you if you worked with one of the food freedom coaches please let me know uh, what's your opinion about that uh, I don't know maybe they just share recipes for cookies which is also mm, something I yeah it doesn't sit well with me uh, because um, yeah I, I don't understand how can you study dietetics and at the same time you know promote eating sugar eating fat trans fats and stuff um, I just don't like the wishy-washy um, uh, wishy-washy approach I don't know philosophy that they do not take a stand because I am a person who likes to take a stand you know I do not support animal cruelty so I take a stand and I'm vegan I do not I think that um, that ultra processed foods is bad so I'm taking a stand against ultra processed foods if the government would say like hey can we vote like should we take away all of our cookies from the uh, from the supermarket I would vote for yes please take that shit away because it's bad for our um, our society <laughs> so I am a person who likes to uh, take a stand and I agree in in the eating disorder recovery there are uh, some people have trigger foods and it's very very important for them to feel safe around these foods it's very important that they incorporate into their diet uh, trigger foods so if I'm working with a client a day uh, I don't know they um, they trigger foods is Oreos I would fully support them taking them eating Oreos and no judgment please make informed informed food choices it's very important for me for you to you know eat the foods you want to eat so again I'm giving you a permission and no judgment I also sometimes make less healthy choices however I'm not going to uh, openly promote eating junk food I think that it's totally different when I'm telling you that You've got my permission, you are allowed to eat whatever you want, you are. Um, I want you to make informed choices because I am making less healthy food choices as well. But I do not agree with promoting this kind of ultra processed foods. To summarize, I think that we still haven't found a holy grail diet, lifestyle, eating pattern that would fit for everybody. Um, food freedom definitely isn't for everyone. Uh, intuitive eating sounds great. However, again, I don't think that it's this, this way of eating is for everybody. I personally, I think that I'm eating intuitively. However, if some um, intuitive eating coach would Come to my house and see how I'm making food choices they would probably say that it's not really intuitive eating but I don't care because I don't like labels why do we have to actually label everything uh, okay so to summarize one more time I would like to say that I believe that um, well definitely there was a backlash of um, diet culture right we can all say that we all hate diet culture but I think that there will be also a backlash backlash of um, food freedom because some people will notice that the problem was not really a restriction let's say that you have a morbidly obese person who is going to um, to um, to fast food restaurants every single day do they really really restrict well maybe mentally yeah I don't know but you know telling them that okay just eat what you want so they will drive to fast food restaurants 10, 10 times a day I just don't think that that food freedom is for everybody and we have to look at the at the statistics uh, about the rising um, rising numbers of people who are morbidly obese obese or overweight like you know we can ignore a few facts that this highly processed foods that this is uh, you know highly addictive and uh, our food choices are actually made by, by our irrational parts of the brain and therefore we choose highly palatable foods okay i think i, I said enough for today <laughs> that would be all what i wanted to share with you today uh, thank you so much for watching i would really love to hear your experiences with binge eating or with food freedom maybe you've worked with one of the food freedom coaches please let me know how it went what do you think about restriction do you think that all binge eating disorder is caused by restriction and let me reassure you that i am very open 
person. So I do not only base my, uh, my knowledge on, on science, but also the clinical evidence is really important for me. And so sort of like anecdotal evidence is very important. So please share with, you, share with me your story. And if food freedom helped you, great. I, it really warms my heart. I really love every success story. It doesn't matter what was the journey to, to achieve that. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye!